Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming up this week, Disneyland has announced an expansion. Facial recognition is apparently coming to Walt Disney World. Disney has rolled out a new feature on My Disney Experience called Magic Mobile. We're going to talk about that. D- uh, DCL has announced a partial return to cruising. And is it possible that they may be getting ready to make major announcements about the Wish, the new ship? We'll talk about that. All that coming up next. From the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Diz Unplugged. Welcome, folks, coming to you live from the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined in the studio this week by my producer, Mr. Craig Williams. Ahoy, hoy. And via the interwebs by Diz editor, Denny Sunderly. Hey there. Associate producer for the Diz Unplugged, Mr. Corey Fiascanaro. Hey, everybody. And awesome woman and we ha- i haven't seen her in 150 years it feels like kathy whirling is with us hi everybody i was so excited when i came in the studio and, and craig told me kathy was was on the show we haven't we haven't seen i haven't seen her in like forever and we're both yes. vaccinated now we can get together and do something we have to get together and, and and do something uh but welcome folks hope your week is off to a good start before i get into the plethora of things there are to talk about this week I just want to remind everybody that this show, along with all the content we produce, is brought to you by DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com. If you like our content, if you like the stuff we do, Dreams Unlimited is how I pay for it. So you could show your support by booking your next Disney World vacation, your next Universal vacation, your next Disney Cruise Line, or Royal Caribbean, or any number of other uh, cruise lines, adventures by Disney, all of that can be booked through Dreams Unlimited Travel. And it doesn't cost you an, a, a, an extra dime. There's no additional fees for using us. And it's a great way to show your support for us and uh, for our content. Um, I also want to remind everybody that we have moved a lot of our content onto separate channels. Uh, so like uh, the Disney Dining Show. Uh, is on its own channel. Uh, the Disney Cruise Line stuff is on its own channel. And we'll have links to all that stuff below, but also moving to Orlando. Uh, if you're interested in moving to the Orlando area, if you want to live here, uh, that is a business I co-own with Sean Falk. We're both realtors. And uh, movingtoorlando.com is where you can find that or youtube.com slash Orlando. Do all sorts of home tours, and shows and stuff like that. So please head over and check that out. Okay. So most weeks, it can be a challenge, to be honest with you, coming up with things to talk about. But Disney apparently loves to do things en masse. And last week, we got two really, really big announcements. The plan to expand Disneyland. And DCL announcing that it is resuming cruising out of the UK. And so, like, either one of those stories is a big story. And then we got some other stuff that's a little bit more, you know, reading the tea leaves. But I'll get to that. But let's talk about this this Disneyland expansion. Um. That they announced there, it looks like they are uh, going back to plans that they had years ago that, for a number of reasons, didn't come to fruition, politics not being the least of them. Um, but they are they're saying that this is going to be an expansion of the park, not a third gate. Does anybody buy that? No. I, I don't buy that. Um, according to the, uh, according to the, the announcement, uh, the plan calls for a new look at plans originally drawn up and approved in the 1990s. Um, 
The proposal calls for a theme park expansion on what is now the Lilo and Stitch parking lot near Paradise Pier Hotel and the Disneyland Hotel. These people love to build on parking lots. I, I, I don't know how many people re- realize that California Adventure is built on the old Disneyland Park parking lot. Um, Absolutely. So this is why I, I think this is why they, they get permits to build parking lots, because they know eventually they're yeah. going to put a theme park on them. <laughs> um, and so... Uh, this is now this is them saying this is what they want to do. It's going to be a couple of years before they even get to a point where these plans can be approved um, and construction can actually begin. So it's not like we're going to see this uh, anytime soon. And if you followed along with some of the proposed construction plans Disneyland has had in the past, they don't always they don't always. Uh, pan out uh a lot of times the, the last time what nothing oh i thought you were getting ready to say something um the last time of course they were planning this massive five-star hotel that was going to sit in front of the disneyland hotel they were going to get rid of I mean, rainforest cafe the amc theater all of that was going to go away and they're going to build this massive five-star hotel and then the battle with the anaheim city council uh, just made it untenable, and they ended up scrapping the plans. Um, so I'm I'm excited about this, but I'm also a student of history, and I'll believe it when it opens. Well, and that's the entire thing with this. That uh, you know, I I know we're not going to go into it in depth to the point that we did uh, when we did the live stream with Mary Jo and Michael, because they, uh, they, they were both a wealth of knowledge in terms of the past history of Disneyland and projects, but essentially Disneyland forward. uh, If people are still confused about it, yeah, it is a proposal plan to say, Hey, Anaheim, you currently have restrictions on zoning for where we're allowed to build stuff. And if you're going to be nice enough to change it, then we can do things like expand on both of our theme parks and, you know, add even more entertainment, shopping, dining. And so it's all one big ruse to try to get Anaheim to change it. If they don't, well, then it's dead in the water. Think about think about the brilliance politically of that move. Anaheim, like many tourist cities around the country has been decimated by the pandemic, right? Uh, They live on tax revenues. They live on on resort revenues. They live on people coming in to the city to be at Disneyland, to stay in the hotels. That is how the city functions. So the city has lost a fortune. And Disney comes along (laughs) like um, uh, a pimp. Let's just call it what it is. And says, hey, you know, scratch my back and I'll build this big ass thing here and you'll make a lot of money. Um, Politically, it's a master stroke. It really is. Now, whether but the politics in Anaheim get crazy, uh, crazier than most places. And it's California after all. So it's where crazy was born. Um, And I'm I'm not don't email me. Okay, just don't, don't, don't. Uh, you got to, even, even Californians got to go, mm, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, but I love California. I do. I love California. You're just nuts. Um, but I think that this is, again, you know, what business is supposed to do, right? There's an opportunity. There's an opportunity. This is something they've wanted to expand. They've wanted to build. There have been a lot of problems with Anaheim. Uh, politically in doing it and wait till some, something like this happens presents an opportunity. I mean, I can't blame them. I, I really cannot blame them for doing this. Um, and of course, you know, just the idea of something new coming out to Disneyland. Yeah. Uh, anybody else not really yes. excited at the prospect? Oh I'm gosh. I'm so stoked. I mean, the last big expansion that we got 
obviously Galaxy's Edge, but that's a mirror image from Disneyland to Walt Disney World. And with a project this big, obviously we're going to get things in Disneyland that you can't get here. And I think that's what Disneyland really needs. Um, this proposal is is a massive stretch of land. Uh, and, you know, I read that part too about it not being a, a third gate and it just being an expansion of the current parks. Um, and what instantly went through my mind is like it must be some like legal thing where it's so much easier to get away with an expansion uh, than it is to actually make a brand new theme park. Um, but if it is just an expansion to the to the current parks, it's it's a huge one. Uh, and I think we'll definitely see some unique things there. Uh, but also, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, an, an additional resort is being proposed too. And that's in addition to the already uh, the already proposed DVC, the new DVC tower. So that would oh, be yeah, another there was no, additional there's, resort. I'll tell you now, there's no way Disneyland's going to build a cardboard box without a resort involved. Um, yeah. There's absolutely no possible way. And again, as I talked about, the plans for the previous, you know, the five star that was going to make Grand Californian look like a, 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 a roadway in uh, uh, was scrapped. And but they were really in on that. So I'm expecting that that's exactly what's going to be part of this, something along those lines. But you bring up, uh, you brought up an excellent point with. Uh, there being uh, probably being a legality in calling it an expansion versus a third uh, a third gate, and I'm sure there is an asterisk in some contract somewhere with the city of Anaheim that applies different rules to an expansion as opposed to a new build, a a, a, a new product. Well, that again is where it gets into the messiness with zoning. Some of the areas that it's all currently sitting on can only be zoned for hotels or entertainment, dining, shopping, and some can be used for theme parks, let's say. So that's why they need the laws to change. So it's more, they can use the land for whatever they want, but the bigger reason why third gate is kind of out of the question, it's not completely. Anything can still happen, but the land that it's all happening on is still so small that for it to be a full park, it would have to completely envelop uh, Paradise Pier Hotel and Disneyland Hotel plus the DVC inside the park. Or it would have to be... Anybody complete, not okay with that? I mean, it's it would be really, really neat to see. But yeah, it, it would have to just suck every hotel and every little bit of that area up into it. So that's why ex making expansions that are across the street connected by bridges, it's not going to be pretty. But it's a way for them to do it without making these hotels sit right in the middle of a theme park. And then, as Fiasco said, I have a picture on the screen of all of the the proposals per se uh the the extra resort is going kind of catty corner from the current property of disneyland there across the street where it would be kind of across from the convention center in the toy story lot okay however it manifests assuming that it uh manifests i don't care i'm in as a as a disneyland fan as someone who loves disneyland this was the kind of announcement, especially after the year we've all had, that just was like, oh, awesome. They're going to spend all this money. They're going to do all this cool stuff. And they're going to let Imagineering do what Imagineering does. Does anybody think that's not going to end up well? Um, now, I realize residents of Anaheim, residents of Southern California may have a different take on, on this to some degree. I'm not one of those people. Okay? So, from my perspective... I'm I'm all in. I thought this was a tremendous announcement. It made me really, really happy. Um, as did the announcement that kind of came out of left field. Disney Cruise Line has announced that they are going to sail out of ports in England this summer. Mm. Um, <laughs> now, let's talk about how this all this all played out last week. There was a an odd, I believe it was it was on Twitter. It was an odd tweet 
from the port of – was it the port of Southampton? Um, it was one of the ports. I think it was the port of Southampton in England saying that Disney Cruise Line was going to be <laughs> going to be sailing out of that port this summer. And we were everybody was like, what? <laughs> then all of a sudden – and it's got picked up by a couple of different outlets. All of a sudden – all those tweets disappeared. <laughs> they disappeared. All of it disappeared. Disney apparently had a fit. And, you know, I told I told Denny and Jackie, go ahead and write it up. If they come after me and tell me to take it down, we'll talk about it. But go ahead and write it up. And we did. And we published it. And then the next morning, and I'm not saying this had anything to do with us at all. But the next morning... DCL came out and confirmed that they were doing this. I think somebody at the port of Southampton just got excited, was a Disney fan and got excited and sent it out from that Twitter account. And it forced the fact that everybody picked it up and everybody was starting to talk about it, forced DCL to confirm it before they were ready. Um, Because it looks to me that they're not ready to start booking these cruises till April, and that's probably when they wanted this announcement to go out. But they figured, okay, well, you know what? (laughs) Might as well just announce it now. So what it's going to be is uh, the Disney Magic uh, will sail out of ports of uh, London, Tilbury, Newcastle, Liverpool, and Southampton. Uh, Cruises are going to be open to UK residents only. And will be two, three, and four night experience at sea without stops at any ports of call. They're not going anywhere. These are cruises to nowhere, which I'm in. You know, if I could go, <clears throat> never did, never more did I want, do I want to be a UK resident than right now? <laughs> but um, they have, uh, they've, they've released very little information on, on what the experience is going to be on the ship, what kind of entertainment there's going to be, uh, what kind of capacity they're going to have. Um, so, like, you know, are they going to require vaccinations? Have they have they said anything about the vaccinations yet? Not yet. No. Um, so, I mean, because Royal Caribbean, of course, announced they're sailing out of Nassau um, starting uh, this summer. I think that also put pressure on Disney to announce this. And, uh, but they're uh, Royal Caribbean sailing out of Nassau. They are requiring vaccinations, something they're getting pushed back on. Uh, I'm not going into that. I'm just going to say that's what's happening right now. I'm not talking about anything else, <clears throat> but I think we can start reading some things from this. Even though, you know, if we're not UK residents, we can't take part in it. The minute I heard this, the first thing that came into my mind, they're ready to go. They're ready to go. I've been complaining that they're not telling us, what are you doing to the ships? Like, what, how are you making this safer for us? And they're still not. But obviously, if they're doing this, they feel these ships are are ready. Now, right now, this, uh, the CDC in the United States has a no-sale order in effect until November. So unless the CDC changes that, no cruise line can sail out of or come into any U.S. ports, which is why Royal Caribbean said, fine, we'll go out of NASA on the Bahamas. Um, now, whether Disney is going to do something like that, I don't know. Uh, What the requirements for vaccines, if there are going to be any, I don't know. Um, They haven't talked about any of this. But this is clear that their ships, in their, as far as Disney Cruise Line is concerned, their ships are ready to go. Their ships are ready to go. Which means if the pressure being put on the CDC, not just by the cruise industry, but also by the governor of uh, Florida... Uh, Ron DeSantis is putting a lot of pressure on the CDC to, if they're not going to lift the no sale order, they have to explain why. Because every cruise line is saying the same thing. We're waiting for guidance from the CDC. And the CDC is effectively holding this industry hostage right now. 
And they may have very good reasons for that. And I understand it. I really do. But communication, guys, communication. Tell them what they need to do to be able to resume sailing on some level. Um, so I thought this was fantastic, fantastic news. And I'm extremely happy for my friends in the UK who will be able to take advantage of this. We don't have a, a specific date when bookings are going to open for this. Um, but it will be available to book in April from what we understand. Now, let's kind of move into another April cruise line story. This one is about tea leaves. This one is about gut instincts, mine and John Magi's. I think before the end of April, we're going to have an announcement. We're going to have an announcement on the wish. And here's why I think that. Now, does that, before I move on to that, anybody have anything they want to talk about in regard to the UK sailings? No. You had said something about maybe they weren't ready. I, I think the I think they absolutely were not ready to announce this yet, um, simply because the when they did announce it on on Friday morning, it was hey, like you said, they'll be available for booking in April. We'll let you know more about that. Um, you'll get to see things that you might see on a Marvel Day at Sea cruise. There'll be frozen themed activities, um, little things like that, but nothing specific nothing concrete, no definite sail dates, all that jazz. We do know June and we know the ports that it'll be sailing out of and that they will be cruises to nowhere, which sounds absolutely divine right? to I, me. I, I, completely. I'm all in. Take me to nowhere, please. I would love that on a Disney cruise ship. And honestly, um, honestly, yes, and I think, I, think, I think we all feel the same way, that the ports are nice. The ship is the destination. Right. Yes. When it comes to Disney, when it comes to Disney cruises for us, for this group, the ports are nice, but I'm more likely to stay on the ship than I am to get off of it anyway. So I'd be perfectly fine if you want to just like float me around for a week. Mm -hmm. Like I said, here's my here's my credit card. Tell me when to show up. But don't you think I tend to think that Disney did it on purpose? And had somebody leak this story no. just to gauge the en interest? Nope. I mean, nope. done that before. Nope. 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 Not this time. Not when. Not when this gets. Not when this gets out there. Not when this gets out there. And then all of a sudden, every outlet that picked it up pulled the story. Mm -hmm. That that. If if they wanted it out there, they never would have told people to pull the story. Because what we've heard from some of these outlets is they were contacted by Disney and threatened. Oh wow. So, you know, and what you know, what their version of threatened is and what mine is, I don't know, it may be very different. But that's the stuff we were hearing. They were told by Disney Cruise Line, take that down. So no, Disney absolutely oh. and that's an organization that wants well, Disney in general, but Cruise Line in particular. They want to control the narrative and the discussion completely. So they're not going to float a test balloon like that. Not with something like this. Not with something like this. So I don't think, I really don't think this was, this was to gauge interest. Um, I think they know the interest is there. They know the interest in there. And, and there's a certain level of arrogance that goes along with that because that's why they haven't been communicating really anything. Yeah. Since the since cruise line shut down, they haven't communicated anything. We don't know what's going on with ships. We don't know what changes you've made. We don't know. Have you have you know Royal Caribbean? Like I said, Royal Caribbean won't go to the bathroom without sending out a damn email blast. Um, every change that's been made to their ships, everything they're doing to make their ships ready to sail and be safe, they have communicated constantly. To people signed up for their mailers and those in the travel trade. I mean, really, they've done phenomenal. Disney Cruise Line? Crickets. Crickets is all I've heard. <clears throat> and I've emailed and begged, please say something. Please say something. And then they release like some ad that, you know, you know we're, 
we're getting ready to sail again, and it's people with masks on. Real? Oh, oh, okay. That's that's. Yeah. It's not twenty. It's not twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen anymore. Okay, the rules are going to be different moving forward, and I'm sure they have done tremendous things to these ships. We just have no idea what they are. And they want people to feel comfortable and safe getting on their ships. You better start messaging that now. Message that now. Because, I mean, look, they they, they released the 2022 uh, summer itineraries. Those booked incredibly well. No surprise there. Pent up demand 2022. We're hoping like everything will be all right and we can, you know, do stuff like people again. Um, But that 2022 release was very telling for what wasn't included. Namely, there are no three night sailings at all out of Port Canaveral in the summer of 2022 in that release and a limited number of four nights. The dream is being moved to Miami. They announced, as a result of COVID, that they were postponing the release of uh, The Wish, which was supposed to be uh, beginning of 2022, and they pushed it back to the summer of 2022. We were thinking maybe with the 2022 summer release uh, uh, itinerary release uh, recently that the wish would be included. It was not. It was not. But you really don't need a lot of help to look at this information. If you've followed even passively over the last few years, Disney Cruise Line. They're going to announce. They're going to announce dates for the wish in April. That's what I think. I have no basis for that other than what I just laid out. Right? I'm not hearing anything. I don't have any inside information. Nothing. This is just me looking at it and saying, okay, that seems like common sense. That we're going to see an announcement in April about the wish. They did. I don't think they wanted to overshadow or cannibalize their 2022 summer itineraries. But it's also very interesting to note that uh, the embedded ABDs for uh, summer 2022 uh, in Europe were all announced, but none of the other ones were. None of the other ones were. So all of these things together paint a picture, right? It paints a picture. So I think April, I think April, Um, I think they were planning to announce the UK sailings in April and this in April. Um, And if somebody at the shipyard decides to get drunk and hop onto the the company Twitter account and (laughs) tweet out, hey, um, the wish is done. Um, But uh, barring that, I think... uh, Anybody, anybody else see that, or am I, or John and I, like crazy? No, absolutely. No, I, I mean, they're common. they're. Oh, go ahead, Kathy. I was just going to say, I th- I think it's coming. They want to have their grand little, you know, <laughs> celebration to announce the wish, and you know that when they announce it, it's going to go crazy. Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. And I do want to get out there. That if you are interested in booking uh, any cruise that has not been announced, the wish in particular, you can send an email to future booking, future underscore bookings at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Give your information and that will be assigned out to an agent. So as soon as those, you know, as soon as that's released, we can we can work with you on getting you booked on that. So if the wish is something you're excited about, if cruises in the future that aren't released yet or something you're excited about, future underscore bookings at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. 
And I made it possible today that if you just forget the underscore, the emails still go through. Because I'm like, why do we have an underscore here? There you go. Yeah, I think I think the fact that we have 10 three and four day cruises um, slated for June this year and we have one for next year and they're moving the dream down to Miami. That is absolutely that is they're just it seems like they're just making they're making a parking spot for the for the Disney wish. Of course, yep. it would go right there. And it's and two other real quick things. Um, I don't want to I, I kind of want to just give light to the fact that when you book with Dreams Unlimited Travel, you walk onto the ship with onboard credit. And if you and it depends on how much uh, you have spent toward your cruise. But if you walk onto the ship with it's like walking in with change in your pocket it's an incredible feeling and it's at no additional cost to you and i just apart from working for you know the diz and dreams before even doing that um used dreams to book a couple of cruises and that is the most amazing feeling walking on that ship knowing you know there's some things that are already taken care of john literally john literally stands at the entrance to the every sailing, at the entrance to the ship, and hands everybody yes. money. Yeah, that's what that's what we do. That's, that's how we that's do it. it. And can I also say that the day that they release this, the Dreams agents will be on the phone making these reservations for you, and they'll do the waiting. You don't need to do anything. Kathy do. and Kathy speaks. Kathy speaks from extensive extensive mm-hmm. experience. Of course, Kathy is one of our fabulous dreams agents. She's been an agent with dreams unlimited for, I think now 110 years, Kathy. <laughs> Something like that. But today is my 15 year anniversary with dreams. Yay. Unlimited. Is it really? Uh, anniversary. It is. Congratulations. Oh my God. That's awesome. That's mm-hmm. awesome. 15 years. Yes. 15 years. She started when she was 14. Yes. Thank she started. You. She was 14. Um, yep. All right, let's move off of cruises and stuff and talk about something else that's going on that some people are a little upset about is that uh, in, in an effort to move to more uh, more of a touchless experience at Walt Disney World, one of the things they are they are doing is they are testing out facial recognition software. So that you don't have to, you know, touch anything, right? To, to give you entry into the theme park. Um, now, Denny, I know Jackie wrote this article, but I'm going to let <laughs> yes. you talk about it. Well, and I'm going to defer over to Craig because Craig actually experienced it, I think. Oh, did you really? Mm-hmm. And it worked on you? It didn't, like, the machine didn't melt down when it tried to read your face? Hey, it did not, no. I. This this gets a uh, well. It, I shouldn't say it gets a lot of uh, a lot of discussion uh, over it all. Like it did when it first announced, because I it, it took a lot of people by surprise. I think there's not much to say about it overall. You, it's a test that you can currently take part in now. That's happening for the rest of April, pretty much. Maybe I think till the twenty third. And you literally, as long as you have your your park admission, you walk right up to the booth. You tap your either magic band or your annual pass or your magic mobile, which we'll get to in a second. You tap it there and they literally tell you don't have a hat on and keep your mask on and uh, no, no sunglasses. And then it just lets you right in. And that's, that's it. It is, I, you know, I was expecting, I was expecting to feel like I was in a spy movie. It is the most (laughs) underwhelming experience I have ever had (laughs) testing something new at Disney. There wasn't even like any satisfaction with it. It was like, I walked an extra 20 feet out of my way to do this. And that's, it's good for my steps. But right now there is a separate queue for, for people who want to be part of this test. Not, it's not, you know, everyone's mm-hmm. not being forced into this. You have to opt in for it. Eventually, it will likely be, you know, de rigueur and, and everybody's going to have to do it. But um, I know some people are like, you know, this is Orwellian. This is a, uh, you know, those those arguments are fair, but it's the world we live in. And 
I don't know. I got to stare at my phone to make a phone call. So I don't know how <laughs> okay, this is any different. I was going to ask Pete what your thoughts were, because as a listener in Maryland, years ago when they mentioned that they were going to do the touch points with the fingerprint thing, you had a cow sideways. Over I did. This. I did. <laughs> so, and that hurt. It hurt having that cow sideways. I will tell you, I'm still not right. Yeah. I'm still not right. Uh, no, I, look, my, my feeling on it has definitely evolved. My feeling on it has definitely evolved over the last 10, 15 years. Um, that... There's, there's making, there, there's making a point and then there's pissing into the wind. And like I said, I have to stare at my phone to make a phone call or I, you know, and I guess I don't have to, I can set my phone up with absolutely no security at all, but that ain't going to happen. Um, and this has just become regular part of our day. Um, there was, isn't there facial recognition in customs? Haven't I experienced that in customs too? I think Coming back into the country. I know, I, I, I want to say that I have had that experience um, at, at somewhere. But, you know. Do you at, remember at, a couple years ago when they were going to put um, scanners down at your feet level and they were going to scan your feet to see where you were going to walk? I like this facial scanning better. <laughs> I look, uh, technology is going to be used. It, it's it's the it's the way of the way it's the way it's always been, right? We make technological advancements. We find ways to integrate them into things we do to make things easier, more simple, more secure, whatever. Arguments to be made. I'm not saying that people that think this is a step too far are wrong. I'm really not. Um, and and maybe I'm part of the problem because I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was upset about it at one point, but I've kind of been beaten into submission um, that there are th much bigger issues that I feel need to be addressed yeah. than this. I And so my, my take on it is – I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who have the standpoint of, I don't want Disney having a picture of my face like that in that way. And I understand that, but I, I'm going to go at it from the, I'm going to go at it from the funnier, goofier way and say, uh, with so many vloggers and live streamers in the park, <laughs> there's probably a better chance that there's a video of you out there on YouTube screaming at your kids or doing something that you would be completely embarrassed about. Uh, Disney having having a photo of your face, that's that's just small. And I mean, photo pass. I if you're telling me there's someone out there who's not archiving all of that, even though it disappears from your account after so many days, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't believe you. So those photos are are there somewhere. It's we we live in a world where we just we kind of have to accept that it's going to constantly happen. And uh, I mean, if you want to move to yeah. if you want to move to Montana and live off the grid, that's an option. It is. Yeah. That's an option. I, and again, I'm really not. I am not dismissing the concerns of privacy advocates and people who find this invasive. I'm I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm not going to mock them or anything else because I think they make a point. I just, I, like I said, maybe I'm part of the problem. But I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, My I really, especially, especially right now, especially after the year we've lived through. I'm like, okay, just whatever. Go ahead. Go ahead. My thought on it is I, I just hope the technology works pretty good. Um, we've all been stuck behind somebody doing the fingerprinting that it just doesn't work out. It's not reading their finger and you're stuck there on your, that line. You're like, oh man. And you're there for like 10 minutes before they actually get it figured out. That always kind of stinks. So I'm just worried. My main, th my main thought is like, having everybody go through this when it is just the staple thing, like trying to get all the kids to do their facial recognition, because this isn't really 
I mean, unless I correct me if I'm wrong, but this really isn't a security thing as much as much as it's a we don't want you sharing tickets thing. Like because that's exactly what way, it's about. But that's also what the fingerprints yeah. were about. Okay, I mean yeah, that's all. So it's replacing that, it. right? So I just my only the first concern, really the only concern that pops into my head is I see more room for error with this than the fingerprinting. Although this is touchless, which is great. I just see lines getting held up. So let's hope the tech works good because we all know how my well, Disney experience isn't always the best the best thing in the world. According to uh, uh, according to Disney, they're not actually like taking a photograph of your face. They're actually scanning your face and and boiling it down to a number. Mm-hmm. And that becomes like your ID number. <laughs> so yeah. maybe maybe when they, you know, when they come to send me off to gay camp. That's the number they're going to use. I don't know. Um, Where is that located? They're, they're going to have a lot of problems when we get in a, a world where the technology in the movie Face Off actually exists and we can just swap random faces with people. We're going to be able to take so much advantage of this. It's, it's going to be. It, the technology will catch up one day. It's just can Disney stay ahead of it? I've already just collected fingers to use for getting into parks for the longest time. Oh so, my <laughs> oh my god! Uh, oh, this is this has been my day today. This has been my day. All right. And speaking of technology, um, does somebody want to explain to me what the hell Magic Mobile is and why this needs to be a part of my life now? It's a magic band in your phone. Yes. Yep. It's, so it's basically it's it's basically an expansion of the already magnificent My Disney experience that replaces your magic band through your phone. Mm -hmm. Now, anybody else believe that this is because they don't want to spend money giving out magic bands anymore? No, that's Um, why. And that's exactly why this is being done. But, I mean, you've already had the ability to, you know, unlock your hotel room through the My Disney experience app. So... That's just kind of being expanded on that. You can use your phone. You can use uh, right now. It's only available on uh, iPhones on iOS devices, but you can use your phone or your watch instead of a magic band. When you walk up to go into a park, Um, uh, presumably you can use it to pay, right? Can you use it the same way as your magic band to pay? Um, You connect your Apple, uh, you connect your Apple wallet to it. And you'll you'll scan the page just like a magic band would do as well. And it's interchangeable. So like if you have your own magic band, you have to sit up on your phone. Whatever works for you that day, you can go with. No. Yeah. And can, thoughts, can thoughts, add impressions? My, uh, add my little tip. Um, I tried it in my Disney experience this morning without downloading anything. And my Disney experience comes up and you can see mobile magic there. But then I went back and read the fine print because it wouldn't come up. I needed to update my iOS and re-download my Disney experience. Well, that's because Kathy is still working on an iPhone 4 um, with iOS like 2. Um, So I do have an iPhone 4, but I did it this way because I figured my clients would you know, like anything else, you want to try it before you see. Because people thought it, because the audience thought I was being sarcastic, <laughs> and I wasn't. <laughs> Kathy, I think she has. I, I think she she still has the uh, the first phone Alexander Graham Bell created, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah. I yeah. do. So I personally, I have been just waiting for this to happen for the longest time. I. I am one of those people who I finally I held my ground on not wanting to use Apple Pay for anything for the longest time. And now I I live by it. Like if I walk into a place that doesn't have Apple Pay and I have to pull out my wallet, I I immediately double I I, I double down. I'm like, do I really want to shop here? Do I want to go here? I I am all for it. So the fact now that I can I can have those days where I completely forget to have my annual pass with me or a magic band because I 
I, I think I've only worn a magic band like three times in my life. One of them Denny gave me and I lost it. And maybe I gave it back. I don't know. But now that I know that my pass will always be on my phone and I always have that on me when I'm at a theme park, I you you cannot beat that. This is this is a long, 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 long overdue. It it needed to happen a while back and Oh, I, I just I can't I can't wait for it to oh, actually go in giddy. and use it. I, I want to go right now. <laughs> like this but is we're Craig working. Giddy, by we're the working. way, it to is. the audience, if they if you want to know what Giddy Craig looks like, they <laughs> they're gonna let him use <laughs> they let him use his phone for his annual pass, and he's over there sliding off the seat. Um, so I, I'm a very simple person. I'm a simple person. <laughs> <laughs> and another neat facet of it is you can share your pass with others who have their pass all set up as well. And then they can they can have that and, and be able to use that. Um, so you can have you can be swiping multiple people in on one device. And as a mom who has had to turn around and go back home to get a magic band or a pass, from one of my wonderful children um, after getting to the park. That's a, you know, when you, when you get there and you don't want to stand in the will call line, I've also had to do that to get a, a multiple, you know, a, a duplicate pass because a child forgot it. Um, this is just going to be really nice as far as the, you know, those who can, who are big into planning. It's the, the group leaders of a trip. You can have everybody's pass in your wallet and you at least know that you have a fail safe. But you know, you know, you know, we are still going to be stuck behind. Is there a frog loose somewhere? That's what I'm hearing, too. (laughs) What am I hearing? I'm like. Is it a cat purring? I don't. I just. If it is, if it is. I don't know. That cat's got something wrong with it. (laughs) It's not any of my cats. They're not here. All right. So I don't know. But anyway, we all know. We are going, no matter what they do, you've got to just, like, show your face. It's still going to take somebody 25 minutes to uh-huh. get through the damn turnstile. It doesn't matter how easy they make it. It is always going to happen. I mean, trying to get somebody to put their, their finger, you know, their finger in something was, like, apparently a step too far. And so, but I I understand that I understand why they're doing this. <laughs> I don't necessarily criticize them for it. Um, but I do understand the other side. I really do. Um, I've just been, I, yeah, I've been, um, like I said, maybe I'm part of the problem, beaten in a submission, like whatever. I want to go into the park. What do I need to do? You want my phone? You want my watch? You want my face? You want my fingerprint? You want blood? What is? What do you need? <laughs> I just want to go into the park. Um, but, uh, yeah, so what the hell is that? Oh, well, unfortunately for us, uh, it does. Uh, I, it appears to be something with Kathy's microphone. And so I, I currently have her on mute right now until we Poor try Kathy. to figure it out. And you just but, walked right in front of yeah. Craig's camera. We have a guest <laughs> in the studio today who decided it was time to go to the bathroom. And... <laughs> you, you, when you gotta go you gotta go you hold it on tuesdays <laughs> yes you do <laughs> well not if you're not on camera i mean if you're not gonna well he, he just was on camera but um all right so anything else anybody wants to add because it's everything i had for today I, I thought i really thought this conversation was gonna go longer i hope you not people Kathy. disappoint me <laughs> poor kathy has nothing to add because <laughs> apparently her t- her her toad cat yeah. is unhappy. Just Kathy, if you have to talk, just uh, like wave your hand so I can unmute you right before it. But I don't think she has to right now. No. <laughs> oh God! All right. Well, there you have it, folks. That's going to be our show for today. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with you again next week with another edition of the Diz Unplugged. Have a great week, folks. <laughs>